Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go through some of the best builds for you to prepare for the brand new 7-star Terror Raid event for Iron Bundle that's coming to Scarlet and Violet later this week. So starting on the 22nd of December and running through over that weekend until the 24th of December for one weekend only, we've got a brand new 7-star Terror Raid and it will be featuring the Paradox Pokemon Iron Bundle. Now, Iron Bundle will have the Ice Terror typing, so it will have weaknesses to Fighting, to Fire, to Steel, and to Rock. Its base stats are pretty interesting. It's got a very high speed stat, a very high special attack, and it has decent defense as well. So using a physical attacker is probably not the best way to go, especially when it's got some decent supporting moves as well. Now, its move pool is pretty limited, but these are the moves that we're likely to see it utilize. Hydro Pump, Freeze Dry, Blizzard, Ice beam hyper beam is an outlier that gives it normal type coverage and a big attacking move that it can take advantage of with its special attack and chilling water is something that it can utilize to further weaken physical attackers because it's got the added bonus of lowering the attack stat by one stage every time it uses it supporting and setup options that it does have access to are going to be things like electric terrain that's going to play really nicely with its quark drive ability so when electric terrain is set on the field Walk Drive activates and it will boost the highest stat that Iron Bundle has access to. So if its special attack is larger than its speed stat and the electric terrain sets up, Walk Drive activates, it will get a plus one to its special attack and stat. Same goes if any of the other stats were higher than the rest, that one will get the boost over anything else. So it's a way for it to give it an additional boost throughout the raid. Something I think we're likely to see. Being an ice type, it would make sense that it's going to have snowscape because that's going to bring the snow or the hail to the field for five turns. Along with that, you'll get a defensive boost on top of its already big special defense stat. And if we're seeing snowscape, I can see the combination of Aurora Veil as well. That is going to be something that is only able to be set up when snow is active on the field. And it pretty much acts like a dual reflect and light screen all in one and lasts for five turns. Aurora Veil will fail if the snow isn't on the field. So if you can disrupt that snowscape with something like Rain Dance, Sunny Day or Sandstorm, then you can prevent it from setting up that Aurora Veil to further buff those defenses. And the other supporting option that does have access to that I wanted to mention was Encore. That's something that we have to be careful about. It could have access to that and lock us into something like Sword Stance, Nasty Plot or any of those setup moves that we feel like we want to go for to expedite our damage. It will of course be level 100. It will have the mightiest mark like all the other 7 star Terror Raid events. And its HP isn't as big as some of the recent Terror Raid Pokemon that we've had. So it will sit after that 30 times multiplier on around 7560. Which makes me think it will have its shield up early on in this raid to kind of compensate for that and it will utilize all these other tools that it does have access to to boost its defense like the aurora veil like the snowscape and that electric terrain which will just expedite its damage output as well so jumping into game these are some builds that i've put together that i think are going to be decent going in as always all the builds that we feature in today's video will be down in the description below so you can take a look at them after the video the first one we're going to kick off with is iron moth i feel like iron moth could be a very strong option against this iron bundle it is fire and poison it will be weak of course to those water type attacks that can come out from the iron bundle so it does have to worry about that slightly but we do have ways to mitigate it and at the baseline of it iron moth has a very high special defense stat which is definitely going to help it out in this raid so we are a fire and poison type the terror typing is fire we're going to be hitting for super effective damage with our fire type moves on the iron bundle we've got the shell bell as the held item that's going to give us a line of recovery throughout the raid so we don't have to rely too much on the heal cheers throughout of course we are level 100 we have hyper trained all of our ivs so they're set to 31 make sure you do that then we've got a move set of sunny day struggle bug acid spray and fury dance the quark drive ability which is another plus about the iron moth overall because if we do see the electric train set up by the iron bundle to give itself a boost it will also give us a boost at the same time so that is something to consider it will give us a boost to our special attacking stat meaning that our attacks are going to hit that little bit harder we've got an ev spread of 252 evs in special attack and then 252 evs in special defense with a modest nature 
the rest of those EVs, the six remaining, are just put into HP. So the basic premise of this moveset is going to be turn one, go for a sunny day, overwrite that snowscape, take away the defensive boost, it'll support the rest of your team as well, and it'll lower the accuracy of any blizzards that could potentially come out from the Iron Bundle. Then you've got Struggle Bug that you can reduce the special attacking stat of that Iron Bundle. Every time you use it, it will reduce the special attack by one stage, so making its attacks hit for less damage. And then you've got Acid Spray. That's going to reduce the special defense stat by two stages every time you use it onto the Iron Bundle. And it will work through the shield as well. So if we see the shield go up very early on in the raid, Acid Spray is something that we can still utilize to lower that special defense stat. And then we can use that Fury Dance, which has the added bonus of giving us a plus one attack to our special attacking stat, meaning that we're going to be hitting a bit harder if we get lucky with that side of the RNG. And then it's already boosted by the Sunny Day as well. It's not only weakening those water type attacks, but it's also boosting our attacks as well and removing the accuracy of something like Blizzard that we could see on the Iron Bundle. So all in all, I feel like Iron Moth, although it's a fire type and you say, probably not the best idea to bring against the water pokemon i feel like it could be a very good option going into this raid next up is galarian slowking now i know not a lot of you are going to have access to galarian slowking but if you do have the indigo disc you can now get the galerica i'm not even going to say it you can get the item to evolve the slowking it's the wreath you can get it now in the indigo disc in the terrarium you can pick up the items that you need to make it and there is an npc who will make it for you and then you can evolve your Galarian Slowpoke into Galarian Slowking, but I do think it's a very good option. We've got the Poison and Psychic typing, so it's not going to have a weakness to any of the big attacking moves that can come out from the Iron Bundle. We've got a Sky High Special Defense stat as well, which is really going to help us out against this Pokemon. Terra type is Rock, so once we do Terrastalize, we will be weak to those water type attacks, but we have mitigations against that. Shell Bell, again, is going to be the held item that we have for a line of recovery. Level 100, Hyper Trained, all of those good things. The moveset is going to be Acid Spray, Nasty Plot, Sunny Day, and then Power Gem. Power Gem is going to be our rock type attack, so that's going to take advantage of our Terra type when we do get to the point where we can Terrastalize. Sunny Day, again, like we've talked about with the Iron Moth, going to be very disruptive, going to reduce the damage of those water type moves, take away Snowscape, all those things. Nasty Plot's going to boost our special attack by two stages. And then again, with that Acid Spray, that's going to work through the shield. And while you're using it as well, it's ticking down your terrestrialization counter. So you can use it three times and then you're going to be ready to terrestrialize and do some really big damage. So if you time it right in the raid, it can work out very nicely. Curious Medicine is the ability, but again, the ability on the Galarian Slow King doesn't really matter too much in this raid. So you can go with anything there. And then the EV spread is going to be 252 in Special Attack, 252 in Special Defense, the rest put in HP with a modest nature so pretty much exactly the same as the iron moth but that is the glaring slugging again i think a really nice option going into this raid if you've got one if it was one of your favorite pokemon but i think between the iron moth and the glaring slugging we're going to have some good options against this iron bundle next up when this raid got announced the first thing to come to your mind was probably gold ingo and for good reason it is going to be a very good option into this raid it is a steel type it's going to be able to hit for super effective damage and it's not weak to anything that the iron bundle can kind of throw out at us we are hitting on the special attacking side as well so it's a weaker side taking advantage of that level 100 it will be hyper trained of course steel terra typing and the metal coat as the held item because we do have recovery on this gold ingo move set of recover nasty plot metal sound and flash cannon with an ev spread of 252 special attack 252 special defense and the rest put in hp would you have guessed it so basically the basic premise of this is going to be if that shield doesn't go up at the start of the battle, take advantage of using the metal sounds. That will reduce the special defense by two stages on the iron bundle. As soon as the shield goes up, you can't utilize that move until the shield has gone down. Then nasty plot, that'll boost your special attack by two stages, further increasing the damage of flash cannon. It's going to be super effective against the iron bundle and recover as and when you need to. You're going to be racing to get the metal sounds off before the shield goes up and then racing to terrestrialize, then using your nasty plots and recovering in and out whenever you need it. So that is basically the gold ingo. The next one is going to be Old Faithful. Old Faithful Annihilab. I think it will be good against this iron bundle. Generally, when Annihilab goes up against anything that's not getting hit by super effectively, it's going to be a decent option. And it does have 
a good move pool as well to kind of support it in this raid. Although I would say going down a physical attacking route is probably not the best option in this one. I still think because a lot of you probably already have Annihilate built in your games, it's going to be something that you can pick up and probably use to a decent effect, especially because this event is only running for one weekend only. So Annihilate is going to have the fighting terror type that's going to be super effective against the Iron Bundle. Shell Bell gives you an additional line of recovery, so you don't have to worry about heal cheers throughout the battle. Level 100, Hyper Train. The moveset we're going to have is Brick Break, Bulk Up, Drain Punch, and Sunny Day. Defined is the ability, which is going to be actually quite nice if we do see that move Chilling Water on the Iron Bundle. So it will reduce your attack by one stage every time it hits you with it, but you'll get a Defiant boost and it'll give you a plus one instead. So nice for that situation only. The EV spread is going to be 252 in HP, 252 in Special Defense, and the rest put an attack with an Adamant Nature. Basic premise is going to be Sunny Day again, like we talked about with the other Pokemon that have access to it. Disrupt the Snowscape, take away those defense boosts that it could potentially get because it's an ice typing with that Snowscape. If it does get the Aurora Veil set up, you can utilize Brick Break. Now that is a move that is going to break the screens. It is also going to be super effective against the Iron Bundle, so a really good option all in all. And then we've got Bulk Up just to boost our attacking stat. It will boost our defense, not going to be very useful in this raid and then Drain Punch, our main attacking option there. Now you could go Screech here, but I did opt to go Brick Break over the Screech because I do feel like the Iron Bundle probably will set its screens up very early on in the raid, so meaning that we're not probably going to get much use out of it, whereas there is a lot more utility with something like Brick Break because of the likelihood of something like Aurora Veil being on the Iron Bundle. So that is basically the Annihilate, something that you can all use. It probably will be effective in this raid. And finally, Iron Hands, another one that a lot of you probably already have built in your games. It is going to be a fighting terror type. It is going to have the metronome held item this time around. And it's also another Pokemon that has access to that cork drive ability. So if we do see electric terrain set up from the Iron Bundle, we can also take advantage of that as well. The moveset is going to be Focus Energy, Belly Drum, Brick Break and Drain Punch. We've already talked about Brick Break and the utility of it on the Annihilate. So exactly the same here. Then we've got focus energy because that is going to give us an increased critical hit chance meaning that our damage is going to be better if we do land a critical hit and then we've got the drain punch as our main attacking option if you've got room for it in the raid belly drum's always a nice thing to do if you're solo and you feel like you're in a position where you can get the belly drum off to maximize your attacking power to just really expedite the speed that you're able to run through the raid so this i think probably will be a good option as well the ev spread is going to be 252 in special defense and then 252 in hp the rest put in attack with an adamant nature and like i say with that cork drive ability so these are five builds that we've got going into the raid I feel like I'm excited to use the Slow King and the Iron Moth, but you know, you can't really turn your head away too much from things that have worked in the past, the Annihilate, the Iron Hands, but there are some nice options, I think, for us going in if you want to build any of them in your game, or if you want to hold off before the raid goes live. Of course, when the raid goes live on the Thursday evening, we will try and stream it and then we'll put out a best build video for soloing this as quickly as possible in your game. So if you want to hold off for that one when the raid goes live, we'll get it out as early as possible like we like to do. And that'll hopefully be something so you don't need to waste resources in the run up. But if you've got any of these in your game and you feel confident about putting them together to go in and tackle this iron bundle when it goes live later this week, I don't expect it to be that difficult a raid. Iron bundle has got good base stats but it does have some big flaws and its move pool is very small. So there's not a lot that we need to worry about. And we can kind of expect what we're going to see from it. So it makes it a lot easier than some of the other raids where we're really guessing right up until the moment of the raid going live. But that is everything for today's video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. As always, if you have found it useful, drop a like. It is much appreciated. And do consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date with all of our raid content and our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content as well. We are currently covering the Indigo Disc and we've got a bunch more content coming out for that up and over Christmas. So have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves and I will see you all again very soon. So until then, friends, take care and bye-bye.